Let's have a look at using some of these tools in Adobe Illustrator. Before we do, let's just check that under View, that there's a checkbox beside Smart Guides. Smart Guides makes it easier to line up different elements on the page. Let's just have a look at some of these basic tools. Let's draw a rectangle. And there we have a rectangle. Now, you'll see there are these little corner radius widgets. That's how I can drag in corners to make a rounded corner. When I drag as far as they can be, they go red. That's indicating it's no longer a rounded rectangle, but it's more a cylindrical shape. With this rectangle selected, you can see that I have a fill colour and a stroke colour. The fill colour, if I double click it or select from here, it's the same. If I double click it, brings up a colour selector tool. Now, if I want red, I can move this all the way up to the reds, click right in that rectangle there, and you'll see that I've got these options here. Look at the RGB options, red, green, blue. I know that for something to be red, it's got to be 255 red hue and no green and no blue. And there's the colour hex for red. So for instance, white is F, 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 F. It's white. Black is six zeros. So anyway, you can see how it's showing you the different colours here. Let's just pop that back to red. So there's a red rectangle. There's an arrow underneath the rectangle tool, so we know that if we hold that down, I'll get some other tools. The polygon tool is important to understand how it works. When I drag out a polygon, it's a multi-sided shape. If I hold the shift key down, it will be straight. So if I don't hold the shift key down, I can spin it. If I hold the shift key down, it's going to be straight. It's red because the last colour I chose was red. Now, the way the polygon tool works is I have this icon here, which again is my corner radius tool. But this is the important one to note here. You can see the plus and minus. It's how I determine how many sides I want. So if I want a triangle, I just draw out a polygon and then adjust the number of sides that it's going to have. If I want this to be a particular colour when I place it, and I might want to get that colour from another icon or another picture. So under the file menu, I'm going to place an image on my screen an image that I've already got, I'm going to paste a picture, place a picture of a penguin. It's just a loaded cursor at the moment. When I click, there's my penguin. I'll just move him a little bit so you can see. It's too big. Now if I resize it, just using this corner, I can completely distort the image. I'll undo that. And like most programs, if I hold the shift key down and resize, it stays in proportion. I've put a penguin on the page because I want this triangle to be orange. So I have a colour picker tool here. You can see here that if I click it and click on the orange of the penguin's beak, my triangle is now orange. Now I'll do that again and show you what I did. I selected the triangle because that's the object that I want coloured. I then selected the eyedropper tool and said I want that thing that's selected, and there it is there by the blue line. 
I want it to be click orange and now it's orange. I'm just going to leave that penguin there for a second. I'll just pop him off to the side. If I want to draw a circle, a circle is an ellipse. This is going to be an orange circle. And I'll just make the stroke blue. If I hold the shift key down when I'm drawing out my circle, you can see here that if I let go the shift key, it's an ellipse. If I hold my circle, hold my shift key down, it draws it out as a circle. Now if I let go the um, shift key, now I haven't let go the mouse key the entire time I've been doing that. If I let go the mouse, if I let go the shift key, I can draw out a circle. All I need to do is to keep an eye out for the cross in the middle. There's the cross, let it go, so that's a circle. Now the stroke weight at the moment is very thin and now you can see I've got a thicker stroke. This icon here allows me in a circle to create a piece of pie. I know I can spin this around from this little corner thing. So the same with this. Put it near the corner, spin it round. Selecting this center means I can move it. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, hold the shift key down. If I hold the alt key down and now let go of the mouse, holding the alt key down makes a copy. A really handy tool to get to know is the Shape Builder tool. Now the Shape Builder tool is this one here. The way the Shape Builder tool works is that I can draw out a rectangle. I can draw out a rectangle. I'll draw out another rectangle. I'll move that over a little bit actually. It's a little bit close, that rectangle. You can see I just grabbed that middle there. And now I'll choose an ellipse, draw out a circle, and draw out a circle. I'll move this up a little bit. And I might just make that stroke weight a little less there. And I'll do the same for that circle as well. Okay, looks a bit like a camera. Now with the Shape Builder, what it allows me to do is to select multiple objects and determine which bits are going to be combined or deleted. So for instance, I've selected these areas here and I'd like some of them to be combined. So if I take my Shape Builder tool now and click and drag, you can see there's a line there and let go. Those areas have been combined and so now I have a neat little camera. The other tool to be aware of is the Curvature tool. So I'm going to tell my Curvature tool I'll have no fill, I'll have a black stroke and I'll make my stroke weight 2 mil so you can see it. The way this curvature tool works is I can click and click. Looks like a straight line but as soon as I start to move it you'll see that it's curving and I'm making a bit of a circle here. But now what if I wanted this to be a straight line? Well I can double click here and it's now a straight line. It wants to be a circle again, so double click here, and it's now a straight line. Double click and join it up. Now the beauty of Illustrator is that even though I've finished this shape, I can 
resize it if I want. But instead of using this selection tool or the direct selection tool, if I go back to my curvature tool, it remembers where all those different anchor points were and they are all editable. So I can move those a little bit if I'm not happy with the shape that I've drawn. With that curvature tool I can add other points along the path if I want to give me more options for changing its appearance slightly if I want to. The reason I've left the penguin here is because I just want to show you how easy it is to create something like these two eyes here. Using this camera as an example, if I select the whole camera and I just move it off to the side here, you can see that with that shape builder tool, what I did before was use this to combine shapes. If I hold the Alt key down, you can see here my cursor is a plus sign. When I hit the Alt key, it becomes a minus sign. So if I hold the Alt key down and click in the circle, then the middle of that camera has now, the middle of that circle has now been deleted. So now you can see there that the grey background is actually showing through. So when I pop it on the screen here, those two circles are white. The penguin, we wouldn't know whether those eyes are actually white or hollow because it's on a white background, but as soon as I move it off to the grey, I can see what's happening. So that's really useful to be able to do that. I'll just get rid of the penguin. Sometimes the different colours in Illustrator can be distracting. So a simple way of just focusing on the outlines that we've got is to go to the View menu and go to Outline View. And that way it just shows you the lines we've drawn. You might have seen the shortcut for that is Control Y. So Control Y brings it back. So now we've got a few basics for using some of the shape and curvature tools.